I would like to introduce Nicoleta Hernandez. Uh, after her studies in Vienna in the field of multimedia technology, she spent several years achieving a lot of experience in the advertising and media environment, especially in Vienna. Uh, parallel to that, she completed her studies on film and animation, and since January 2019, she is working at the Kunsthistorisches Museum Vienna and is involved in several important digitalization projects. Um, her focus and her interests uh, are uh, mm, oriented to the combination of design and technical implementation, the enthusiasm for uh, exciting contents, and um, to develop user-oriented solutions. This is, uh, those are her major interests. But, but first of all, for us today, she's the person realizing and programming with lots of efforts, our visual exhibition from real life into the world of art. So I, I'm very happy that we can present a preview of this larger, very intensive Art S research project up output. And through her talk, um, we will discover this preview, and I hope uh, you will enjoy to see um, the first results, this preview version of the digital exhibition, which shall, I hope, be opened officially to the public uh, in 2020. Maybe Carmen will tell something more in the afternoon about the timeline of this project. So please, Nicoletta, we are very interested to hear to your talk. Uh, thanks, Rudi, for the nice introduction, and thanks to uh, Mrs. Eschenfelder and Mr. Pantoja Ferrari uh, for sharing your inspiring and pioneering work. Um, yeah, I'm really happy to have get t uh, to know this a little closer. Um, so today I'll give you a little insight on the creation of the digital exhibition Art S. Um, about the uh, web design and digital resources. So uh, initially, uh, as we be heard before, uh, of course there are a lot of uh, advantages in a web application. That is, we can reach a uh, um, mass of people on the World Wide Web. Uh, we can expand the subject and underline it through interaction and animation. And uh, we have the opportunity to uh, have a compact presentation of um, a lot of content. So, what is the status of the di digital exhibition now? Uh, we have finished um, five subjects that uh, the re researchers from the Art S project prepared and put together uh, framework uh, where this is all um, visualized. And which technologies are used for the artist project? So now here's a little behind the scenes of uh, the work um, I'm doing every day. Um, everything is based on a content management system to manage the data we uh, want to share. <coughs> Uh, we have a back-end, which is actually a web application that you can put content in. Um, that is stored in a database. Uh, and it's played out through templates to the front-end, which is the actual website that we'll see. So the template uh, you can imagine as a grid of placeholders um, that um, plays out the content we've been providing. Um, so now we've created these templates to um, make the tutorials that we've heard before. Um, and uh, we manipulate them using, uh, of course, HTML is what every website is built on. Uh, CSS, uh, cascading style sheets, um, so, uh, yeah, which is uh, to change colors, add a little animation, and um, structure everything. 
and then uh, we have JavaScript to uh, implement more complicated um, yeah, um, interactions. Um, so then as well, we've created uh, plugins. Um, I will show you later on what we did, but this um, in short are modules to display um, like special interactive or technical elements. So now I start with the tour through the preview of the exhibition. I'm sorry that my voice is so uh, breaking. I'm, I'm a designer and engineer, and I'm not talking to people like every day, but I guess you'll understand. <laughs> so we have this menu of our um, subjects. The first five are finished, as I told you. So they're presented in color and they're clickable. Um, the other ones are grayed out and coming in 2020. Um, if we scroll further, we uh, get more information about the project, what it is about, who um, is involved. You see there's a great uh, research team behind this. Yes, let's go back to our contents. I start with the first one. Um, yeah, you see um, all this builds up on um, with tiny animations. Um, here we have a large um, main picture. And we start with the content. So we've created the uh, little interactive elements. So here we want to focus on this backdrop of the painting and show um, that it's quite similar to depictions in uh, literature um, of that time. So we just blend it in with a little hover effect. And we've got the user focused and involved in our application. So, as we have also seen before, um, there are a lot of read more elements to uh, get deeper into the content. So, I think this is really good um, to not um, overwhelm the user <coughs> with too much content and like hide little things and add the interaction to it. So, if you're interested in getting deeper into the topic. Here again, we have an uh, interactive element. Yeah, I'll change to the second topic. Uh, oh, maybe I should explain this. Um, we created this little menu here um, to guide you through the exhibition, which is um, like right now a normal um, website menu or looks like this. But I think it would be cool if we had um, like more the impression of an exhibition and guiding through it, but we we'll work on that. So, a short stroll around El Prado. Here, because um, the theme is nonlinear, um, we thought about um, these little maps to explain the content. I'll start down here. So um, and basically, we're explaining the picture in this subject. Um, so we implemented this um, zoomable image that um, uh, are also used for online catalogs and um, stuff like that. So we can zoom in here look at the very details in the picture and then if I'm interested in more I have uh, these little hotspots and if I click on them I get to see further content so here as well another element um, we want to explain the minstrels um, so we have these little tooltips. So hmm? 
on to the next one. Ah, sorry. Ah, yeah. Okay, yeah, we saw this uh, this little map here. Um, can always take us back to the navigation of the picture. Okay, um, yeah, let's go here. We zoom into the image, and there is the content. And we can go back up again. <laughs> So, yes, <laughs> okay. Um, I'll choose this one because there's another map integrated, which is built a little differently um, because the contents are a little shorter, so we can stay in the image and um, present uh, this little text. But it just got lou louder now. Am I to? Um, Okay, so then we have two uh, projects um, which are made of a video um, and animation. So we simply start off with this big player element and are looping a little video to um, show what is expecting us. If I click on it, the video starts and it's played from YouTube, which is where we host our videos right now because um, hosting videos because of the size of the format, um, yeah, it's good to uh, use existing uh, platforms for that. So we can read more about the project and go on to the next one. Um, later on, we'll hear a little more about Il Pomodoro um, by my colleague Daniela Franke. And um, the last uh, tutorial that is finished uh, is here. We uh, once again have these switching images. And here we have use uh, modal windows um, to present uh, additional content. So you've marked a word and um, then switch to the details. While scrolling, we change this picture here to vi visualize um, the change of the content. We can, yeah, of course, open these images. Um, I started to add uh, tiny animations like this one here, which is realized uh, as a little GIF element, which is um, around for a very long time. I personally liked it a lot. Um, yeah, so let's get back to the presentation. Um, okay, I uh, explained most of the didactic components uh, before. I'll switch through them quickly. So we have these tooltips, the modal windows, the discover more um, headlines or sentences, uh, the image change, Zoomable image with hotspot. Um, the script we are using here is called OpenSea Dragon, um, which is uh, created by Microsoft um, and is now um, made available for a general public license for uh, educational reasons. And uh, cinematic elements and the video content. Um, yeah, that, that is what we got so far. Hopefully, would there be more. Um, how did the creation of the digital tutorials work? 
um, first the researcher has to break down the subject and collect all the material. So this is what I got from um, these first subjects, so the little PowerPoints explaining the content and all the pictures in one directory. Um, then, what has also happened before, um, the researcher made a little storyboard and sequenced the content. Um, this is the wall of my office, um, showing where I put this up and made little arrows and tried to um, understand what it's about. Here um, is my um, notes um, on planning this. Um, then the, we have to process the images for the animations. Um, we have, uh, I have colleagues um, that are working as image processors that help me there. Um, oops. So um, next uh, we have uh, all the text and um, pictures together and planned all the website. So it comes to content implementation and alignment. So it, here is a view of uh, the type of free backend I'm working in. Sorry, I'm a little too quick. Um, then um, we have these templates I mentioned before. And the next step I did was um, styling the content. As you saw, each tutorial had uh, different colors and view uh, looks, um, and that is happening via CSS um, that I put into the type of free uh, application. So, and then we add uh, interactive uh, and special elements like these hover effects. Um, and at the very end, or not at the very end, but at some point, um, we are adding the animation, like this little uh, mister is, was coming in from the side, and all these um, effects. And for final, we translate the website, and of course, revision what we've done. So, what more is to come for the digital exhibition? Well, we, of course, will implement the 11 further subjects. And um, I uh, or we want to do this and uh, like um, develop new ways to support and underline the presentation of the subjects. And um, as I said before, uh, um, it would be uh, nice to um, have a, a, the navigation, uh, navigation enhanced uh, in terms to uh, to make you feel like you're in an exhibition and not on a website. Yeah. Um, so we are launching in 2020. This will be the domain that we are hosting on. And I am um, done for now. If you have any questions. Um. Thank, you. Thank you very much, Nicoletta. Thank you for this very interesting presentation with a lot of attention for detail, details and how to construct also a virtual exhibition like this from the informatic point of view, how is the page being constructed? Of course, you were not going into all details of techniques, but it gives just an overview for us art historian, critics, whatever we are, <laughs> to see that uh, in order to come to such an output, we have to work together and we have to find strategies together. You are an expert in constructing the page, uh, somebody like me or our colleagues are experts about contents. You, uh, we had to find a good way to produce the material for you, get the images, put together all the texts, all the information, and we had to put them in a way that they are accessible for you as um, a colleague constructing the page, 
and of course that will be as 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 much as possible accessible for the public so this will be the point of the future uh, opening of the exhibition and on the other hand you were also studying the content because to find the best way to uh, transpone, for example, uh, Carmen's uh, information about um, Venetian painting and uh, scenography of that time, to find the best way to present this comparison between these two different worlds, you had also to know a lot of information about the content. So I think this is um, a very important point we are, we are discussing today. How can, how can art historians or even artists work together with web page experts and um, colleagues like you working with the uh, computer part, yeah, the technological part to get to a, a good result that we hope people will appreciate. We saw even from Javier Pantoja and from uh, Chantal Eschenfelder that digi a digitorial like this is a new, really powerful tool and there is a lot of people using that. So there is a lot of people who want to um, deepen into specific <coughs> themes visiting a page like this. And yeah, I think we are going to a very interesting result. We will show or extend to the public uh, then in 2020. So thank you for your presentation. I don't know whether there is a question to Nicoletta about her presentation from you all. There is a chance now to do so. Uh, well, later on as well, if you want. We to. will have maybe <laughs> a chance to get back.